I'm Smart, here's a brand new video for Tutorials with JS. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Adobe Photoshop and how to actually create pixel art. Now, pixel art is basically a small scale form of art, where instead of working with thousands of pixels, which is what most pictures are made out of, you're working with a small number of pixels anywhere between from a 16 by 16 design, a 32 by 32 design, 64 by 64 design, and sometimes they'll even go up to 128 by 128. But uh, this is very relevant to if you're creating games, if you're creating icons for websites, if you're creating Minecraft assets even. A lot of people like working in pixel art because it makes it easy to render things and you can upscale them then. Uh, a few things you want to keep in mind, but for the most part, it's fairly easy. I'm going to be showing you how to create some pixel art in Photoshop. So the first thing is we're going to create a new image. So all I've done is click File New. And depending on what dimensions you want to work in, you can work in 16 by 16, you can work in 32 by 32, 64 by 64. It really doesn't matter. Uh, be aware though that the lower resolution you work in, the lower the amount of pixels in your image, the less opportunity to add detail you will have. Also, if you upscale uh, very small pixelated images, they'll also get blurry. So you wanna work in sort of a nice medium in, 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 a, in an average. You don't wanna go too small, you don't wanna go too big. So I tend to like to work in uh, either 32 by 32 or 64 by 64. So we're gonna go ahead and use 32 by 32 here. That's 31, 32 by 32. And you could do something like this. Like I said, if you want more detail in your pics or if you feel like you need more space, you need more pixels, you need to add more, uh, need to add a bit more detail into your work, then you can obviously go higher pixels. The higher pixels you go, the more work space you'll have available to create your image. So we're gonna go ahead and press create here. And you'll see it gives us a nice little square. We can zoom in holding on the Alt key and the mouse wheel can zoom us in. Now there are two things that you want, well actually a, a, quite a few things that you wanna be aware about when you're doing this. For one, you wanna be on your pencil tool. Now the reason why you wanna be on your pencil tool, as you can see I'm, I'm on the brush tool right now, but the pencil tool is the best tool to use for pixel art. So here's your brush tool, go ahead and hold down on it and you'll see your pencil tool here, here. And as you can see, it's right now it's, it's a pretty big size. We wanna just go up, go up here to the top, our brush options, make sure everything is the lowest. It can be one point. Everything is one point. Your hardness can be 100. Go ahead and press enter. Make sure you pick the smallest brush you have, just like that. And as you can see, now you have a, now you have a pencil that will basically place a color in each pixel with the proper size of that brush. Next, we wanna head up to view and make sure your snap is not check marked. This will allow you to uh, be more accurate when you're actually drawing things. If you have snap selected, then it will actually cause some problems. It will be inaccurate in where you're drawing. So make sure you have snap off. Make sure you have under show, make sure you have your grid selected. And as you can see, our grid is very big right now. It's not showing us a grid by uh, by pixels. So we go to edit here, we go to preferences, guides, grids, and slices here. You wanna make sure that when this opens, you set guides entry is set to pixels. So here we go, pixels and subdivision set to one as well. So one by one, everything should be. And as you can see, now our grid is actually separated by pixels. We have 32 pixels across, 32 pixels down, and this makes it easy for us to actually draw. Now, like I said, it's a lot of squares here, so if you feel like you're a bit overwhelmed, if you feel like this is too many squares to be working in, you can always adjust your grids, or you can adjust the image size to be 16 by 16 instead of 32 by 32. And the last setting we wanna adjust is go to edit, go to preferences one more time, go to general, Make sure your image interpolation is set to nearest neighbor here. Go ahead and press OK, and you'll be ready to go. Now, one thing that I like to do is grab my, and this is completely optional. If you like working on a, back, on a black background, you can very well do that. However, one thing I like to do is grab my paint bucket tool, which is right here, and grab more of a neutral color. So maybe like a gray here, and as you can see, this can be helpful, but some people don't like the fact that they can't see the grids that much anymore. So if you wanna have like a neutral type of color here, then you can very well do that. As you can see, this is a bit better. 
so you're not working on a plain white background so you can do that if you want otherwise you can just work on a plain white background so from here on we can grab our pencil tool and just make sure you're on pencil again and we can start drawing something so say for example I wanted to draw an apple maybe we're gonna grab a red here in our color area here and we'll just start coloring and as you can see as our cursor goes over each square it accurately maps to the proper pixel so drawing kind of like this it, it's okay but what you want to get into the habit of doing is if you want to get perfect curves sort of you want to go diagonally and then at one point start going across um, that's sort of the technique here you don't have to go oops you don't have to go diagonally constantly but you can go down a bit as you can see something like that but pixel art can be a bit difficult uh, just find a technique and stick to that technique consistency is key you don't want some of your art to look like this and then other ones to be perfectly like that when you're trying to go down because it's just more of a headache for you to get it right so I would find a rule and stick to it say if you're going a diagonal line down to tell yourself okay for this image I want to go to diagonal then I'll go uh, down like that and I'll go to diagonal again and I'll go down like that Whoop, not that way to diagonal and then down like that again so that the other side would look the same you don't want to go down this way and the other side and the other side you go down like that that just won't look consistent so just find the technique and, and go with it. it. It may take some time to learn how to draw on pixels and I would definitely recommend looking at some other pixel art online so you can get a feel for how you know curves and corners are made and how certain 3D elements are implemented and stuff like that. I would definitely look into online pixel art images and see what type of techniques they're using so you can apply them to yours. But before we do anything, and this, I forgot to mention this, go up to layer, click new, new layer. You wanna do all of your drawing on a new layer. So if I'm drawing this apple here, I'd want to go ahead and first, I guess I'll draw uh, first this part here, the top. And then, as you can see, I want to have that same consistency on the other side as well. At least for this apple, I want it to be pretty much symmetric. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then from here on, so let's actually go something like that. And then maybe let's go like that. No, that doesn't go evenly. Maybe we need to go down a bit more like so. There we go. And then on the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing, basically. So here we have one there. And then... We'll, we have three stairs going down, three stairs going down. Next one, we're just going to go down like that. And as you can see, we need one more here. Then we need two here, one there, one there, one there. And we go across. As you can see, it starts looking like an apple almost. So uh, what you can do here then is grab your paint bucket tool and you can actually just fill the inside in like so. And that's, that's perfectly fine to do. Because instead of, you know, coloring everything in with a pencil, you can just use your paint bucket tool. You can also center align your content by following the purple grids that pop up here. If you can see, this means it's centered, this means it's centered going horizontal, this means it's centered going vertically, and in the middle, that's centered completely. But we're not completely done with designing this, so we're gonna move it down. We wanna go ahead and add uh, some leaves and a stem coming out here. But we need to find in a brown now, so, Brown is usually in between orange and red, right around here. So here's my brown. And we're gonna go back to our pencil tool here. There we go. That looks a little better. Not it doesn't look that amazing, but I'd say I'd say that's fine. Ah. Control Z, I mean Alt Z, not Control Z, Alt Alt Control Z. Alt Control Z will undo everything. So if you ever need to undo something, that's your key. Uh, you know, I think I'm doing this wrong. Uh, stem only goes up once and maybe something like that. That's our stem. Then we're going to go ahead and grab a green here like that. And we're just going to try to make a half decent leaf here. 
and that looks fairly good. So now when you're done here, what you can do is you see this entire layer we have here, we can go and center this. Another technique you can do is whenever you're adding things to your drawing, you can work in multiple layers. So if you wanted to make a layer for the stem and a layer for the leaf, you could have very well done that. Um, otherwise, you can work on one layer here. But the thing is, now if you want to keep this background, after we centered it, if you want to keep this background, you can keep this. Otherwise, you can just uh, hide the background and you can actually save this as a PNG. And if you save it as a PNG, it'll have a transparent background, which means you'll only get your apple here. Otherwise, you can have a background here and the background will be included. Now, some other things you can do is you can enhance this image a little more by going to right clicking your layer here, going to blending options. And perhaps you want to add a stroke or an outer glow. Some people like adding an outer glow or a drop shadow or an inner shadow, stuff like that. You can do that very easily with some of these filters here. However, be aware that a lot of these filters require a bigger uh, canvas to work with because, for example, the outer glow here, if you use that, as you can see, the glow is super huge because it requires so many pixels. So with certain effects, you want to work in bigger canvases uh, to have this glow be more accurate. In other situations, you may not need any of these. And a lot of times, it's just easier to manually do it yourself with different shades of the color. The other thing I want to go over real quick is adding some 3D dimensions. And how you can add 3D dimensions is just by you know adding shines or shadows. So if we grab a... If we get our red, if you ever need the same color here that you used before, you can grab your color picker tool here, and when you press, it'll give you the color. So this is a tool right here, color picker tool. You press anywhere, it gives you the same color. So we want to add a shine to it. We're going to get a slightly bright, slightly lighter uh, red here. And as you can see, when we get a slightly slight, when we get a slightly lighter red, we can actually create a nice little shine on our apple that's very subtle it doesn't need to be anything crazy but just a slight adjustment like that can make a difference and you can do the same thing with maybe a darker red and you can add some shadows even also if you wanted to do something like that so there are several ways you can add 3d elements to your pixel art by working with different shades work with lighter shades darker shades and you can make this and you can make this design as in-depth as you may want to go but that's pretty much the basics behind that's how you create pixel art in Photoshop. Those are all the technical things behind it. And uh, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. Plenty of other Photoshop tutorials on our channel, other video editing tutorials on our channel, and lots of audio editing tutorials, all kinds of cool stuff. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. We'd love to help you out. If you have any questions, I'll be down there answering your questions and talking to you guys as usual. And if you want to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can do so as well. Click the card on the top right-hand corner of the screen. And I'll bring it to the page. And if you're interested in the vlogging channel, gaming channel, advice channel, music channel, links are in the description as well as in the end screen. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching, as always. And this is GS Man. I'm smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.